A moment of astonishment. A butterfly flies past my kitchen window. It's heading north. It has fl flown over 1,000 miles to reach the south coast of Ireland, and it still hasn't completed its journey. Another moment of astonishment. I'm looking down the microscope at a tiny beetle, less than a millimetre in length, and it has wings like a feather. And another, we're walking along a remote beach in County Waterford, and we find hundreds of slug-like animals washed up on the sands. Sea cucumbers. And as I hold one in my hand, I'm astonished and fascinated by this truly bizarre animal. Our biodiversity is astonishing, awe-inspiring, bizarre, beautiful. I'm an insect scientist, an entomologist, and I'm fascinated by the Irish insect fauna, and I'm constantly learning new things about it. And I'm, you know, the world of insect, Irish insect fauna is full of moments of astonishment. And even a lifetime of study would leave one learning, wondering. One of the questions I wondered recently was, how many species of insects do we have in this country? And that led me to another thought, well, how many species of everything do we have in this country? I thought it was a pretty simple question, but I quickly realised that nobody had actually brought that information together. Nobody had answered that very simple question. And as I did, did some research, I realised that we know more about the numbers of stars in the galaxy than we do how many species we have on Earth. And I can understand that it might be almost impossible to know how many species there are in the Amazon rainforest, for example, but I thought we would have a better idea of it here in Ireland, a developed country. So I went about looking into my question, answering my question. I found that the information was hard to find. I spent evenings reading obscure journals, contacting experts, compiling the information. And with the caveat that we're discovering new species in Ireland every single year, we came up with a figure, a figure of what is known at least. And that figure is 26,000 species. 26,000 species of animals, plants and fungi in this small island country of ours. Another moment of astonishment. And what fascinated me most was the breakdown of this figure. The vast majority of our biodiversity is made up of small creatures without backbones, the invertebrates. 18,000 species and counting. That's 70% of our total biodiversity. Tiny, obscure animals that we know practically nothing about. And in terms of the biodiversity, in terms of the, of the numbers of species, they're followed way behind by the plants, the fungi, the mammals and the birds. So the vast majority of our biodiversity is made up of these tiny, obscure animals that we know very, very little about very little information on what, where they are. Most can only be identified by a handful of experts. Most are only found from a few locations in the country, and that's because that's where the expert lives, or that's where he or she went on their holidays. And these experts are retiring at a rapid rate and are not being replaced. So this skills, this information is being lost. For the, for the species we do have some information on, we know that our invertebrates are under threat of extinction. Recent work has shown that one third of our snail and slug fauna is under threat of extinction, and one quarter of Irish water beetles. Now that may be of passing interest. Let, you know, few of us have little affinity with beetles or slugs, to tell the truth. But what about the fact that one third of our bees are under threat of extinction? Now that's something worth thinking about. Why would this be important? Why should we care at all? Sylvia Earle spoke last year at TED She's a marine ecologist with an interest in the deep sea, and she's explored the deep sea using these deep sea submersibles. And she told how astronauts and deep sea divers are alike in their appreciation of the importance of air, water, food, and temperature, all the things they need to stay alive when they're in space or under the deep sea. She told how they need to learn everything they can about their life support system, and then they need to do everything they can to take care of it. Earth is our life support system. We need to learn everything we can about it, and then we need to do everything we can to take care of it. And biodiversity is the foundation of our life support system. These tiny, obscure animals that we know practically nothing about are an intrinsic part of our life support system. Of course, they're important in their own right, but they're an intrinsic part of the whole picture. This year is the International Year of Biodiversity, and Ireland has committed to halt the loss of biodiversity this year. What a worthwhile commitment. We don't want to lose any more of it. And 
This year is so important. I'd like to make the suggestion that we change the name of this year to the International Year of our Life Support System and that this commitment to halt the loss of biodiversity <coughs> is ours, not the politicians, not the civil servants, not the policy makers, but ours. It's our life and we want to take care of it. And what's happening in nature conservation now is that our, our biodiversity is being pushed into small pockets of the landscapes, our nature reserves. Well, what if the services that our biodiversity provides to us is only available in these small pockets of the landscape? Think about the service that bees provide in pollinating our crops. And what would happen if they disappeared? What about nutrient recycling in, to give us fertile soil? A, a service provided by many insects and fungi. Pest control, a free service provided by an alien of tiny, or uh, an army of <coughs> tiny alien-like creatures. What about the clean water we drink, the clean air that we breathe? We need these services everywhere, across our landscape, in our gardens, on our farms. We need to make this commitment ours. And this is so important. We should have this year every year. And I think that's an idea worth spreading. <laughs>